So broadly speaking, this upload is about conflicts between different users of the coastal ecosystems. We're going to start by considering what goods are provided by coastal ecosystems. So obviously human food from fishing, using lobster pots to obtain shellfish, we get animal feed from fish meal. Obviously, seawater is incredibly salty, so we can obtain that salt and that helps us preserve food. And particularly in the olden days, this was the main way in which people preserve their food. And then lastly, we get land, which can provide space to build settlements and farming. We also get construction material, particularly sand, which we can harvest from our beaches. And we need that sand for making concrete, cement, mortar, which we stick our bricks together on our houses. What services now are provided by coastal ecosystems? Well, when we build harbours, we get protection from storms. Leisure pursuits, such as scuba diving, snorkelling, sunbathing on beaches. Remember, most coastal ecosystems, but particularly coral reefs, salt marshes, are a great source of biodiversity and provide great habitats for wildlife. Who are the main users of coastal ecosystems? Well, local residents who live there, Other users include employers, as we have places for shops, offices and factories. Places for farmers, if that land has been reclaimed, they can plant crops or keep their animals there. Any harbours and ports provide work for fishermen. Now the transport industry will build ports and airports close to the coast for obvious reasons, particularly those ports will allow the movement of shipping containers. And then finally tourists, which is probably the one which you'll think of first of all, which will be using the beaches and hotels which have been built there. Now really looking at potential conflicts. So potential conflicts over use of coral reef ecosystems. So if we consider tourist use, they want to go snorkeling and scuba diving to look at the wide range of biodiversity. Then you've got fishing men, which will want to fish on the coral reefs, reducing biodiversity. causing potential damage. So a major source of conflict here is going to obviously be the conservationists will want to preserve the coral reef, which is likely to conflict with the interests of the tourists and the fishermen who want to use it as a resource.
Now we'll consider conflicts and mangroves. Remember, mangroves provide a great place for fish and crustacean nurseries, so where they are going to spawn and bring up their young. Those mangrove roots trap silt and help create new land. Mangrove timber provides a source of fuel and building material. So we can already see a potential conflict here between the preservation, where we want to maintain our mangroves to provide fish and crustacean nurseries for those mangrove roots to hold down the silt, but then obviously if we have humans wanting to deforest to harvest those trees for timber, that's obviously going to cause damage. So there's a conflict between preservation and destruction of mangroves. And we'll really talk about what those types of destruction are. I've already mentioned deforestation, land reclamation, and even aquaculture, which is the farming of fish and shrimps. So the roots hold down silt and the mangroves provide protection for low-lying land against storm surges. Now we take sand dune and potential conflicts. These are likely to be the least threatened because they offer little by way of leisure, tourism, industry and agricultural possibility. So least under threat. There's one way in which they could be used for leisure activity. People like to build golf courses and they like to go trekking and horse riding because they are very pretty and obviously that can destroy that fragile sand and marum grass. And we do really want to protect our sand dunes because again, they provide protection for low-lying land against storm surges.